I do want to mention that I have done some similar segments of the Gig Geezer in which I posed the question of uh, why a person should have um, pursue the ownership and operation of a Sprinter slash cargo van and why not a person should pursue the ownership and operation of a Sprinter slash cargo van. And I've also, I also mentioned in 2023 how I felt that it was the right decision at the time. But this is not, this is not a, this is not going to be a repeat of anything, any of those things. These are just, this is just my sharing with you, my observations and my just my true gut feelings after now 18 months. Um, I completed transaction for this van on December 16, 2022. And it was a Friday. Um, I actually initiated the paperwork in Columbia, South Carolina, but I drove four hours to Cumming, Georgia, which is outside of Atlanta, to um, secure the secure the paperwork on this van. So. Getting back to the getting back to this theme of blessing and curse in the ownership and operation of a Sprinter slash cargo van. Um, over these last 18 months, I've I've done a lot of oil changes. I've driven a lot of miles. Um, I've paid a lot of van note payments. I've made a lot of commercial insurance payments, and I've shown many months of earnings. Um, and I'll be even mentioning um, the June June 2024 um, earnings and where I'm at now at at the halfway mark of the year. Um, and then I'll, and then there's also the other thing that I got to mention about there have been some major repairs um, over the past 18 months. Um, This is now, I think one of the biggest questions that folk have is how do you make money with a van or with your van? And my answer is that there's a lot of ways. What you've got to understand is that while I've been showing content doing transport and delivery work, a van is a very versatile, a spinner slash cargo van is a very versatile vehicle. And it can be used for other types of services. Um, I've mentioned that in multiple segments of the Gig Geezer, but I'm going to go over them again. I mean, a, a Spinner Slash Cargo Van can be used for tire repair, for mobile auto repair, or um, it could be used um, for junk removal, or as I've seen, a, a long, uh, uh, an extended body high roof van be used as a pizza shop. Another example, it could be a dog grooming um, shop or even a mobile barber shop. So what you have to understand is that your van is literally the vehicle by which you conduct your business. Your business is not cargo van. Your business is what you do with it. So for me, it's delivery and transport. For another person, as I mentioned, it could be tire repair, mobile, mobile auto repair, barbershop, dog grooming, pizza shop, any, uh, whatever you can out of the van. Junk removal, garden, uh, hey, landscaping. The van is just a vehicle by which you conduct your business. Now, I think at least based on the content that I'm, I've, I guess I've kind of become accustomed of viewing here on the gig, um, here on uh, YouTube, is that um, I think there's a big misconception that people think that once they get a van, now they are entering entering into the money. Now I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this setting up this. I mentioned early on. I mentioned early on that my transitioning away from operating primarily out of my F-150 was based on my having recognized that a Sprinter slash cargo van may put me in a, may give me a greater earnings capacity. 
And then I've mentioned in multiple segments of the Gig Geezer, at least some reference to it, and actually in an actual segment, how size equal money. And there have been some uh, content creators who have pretty much, who have pretty much um, confirmed what I've said, in which their next move has been a longer body, higher roof van. So we're talking size, the size and money uh, component. But what I'm that's just to set up the fact that you see my content, you see CJ, CJ's content, you see DDK's content, and you may see a few other people's content, and I think people get that misconstrued. They think that a van is their ticket to this big money when there's, there's a lot of things that go into the money that is made. And I'll go as far as to say, I'll go as far as to say, all that glitter is not gold. Um, but there's, there's a. I, I just believe that by looking at some of the content out there, there's a big misconception that oh, you get a van now, I can emulate what CJ's doing, what DDK's doing, or even what Geezer's doing, and that's just to name a few. But I'll go as far as to say that when it comes in realistically you may not ever come close you may not even come close and the reason being there's a lot of there's a lot of factors with that it's market conditions um, just your ability to find money um, just a lot of just a lot of factors um, probably I'd probably have to do another segment of the gig geezer to, to talk about those factors now that said, I know someone right now who has a full suite of vehicles, but when I met him, um, I met him as he was driving his Sprinter slash cargo van. And one of the first things he did was show me some check stubs of what he was doing. And he was earning, at that time, about 10, 10 Gs a month. And I've, I've shared in the past how I said, I told my queen, I met this guy and I'm like, that's what I want to be able to say. I'm earning 10, 10 G's a month. It took me a while, but I'm there. That's just that that's once I mean if you just want to if you want to base success on that, then that's just one success story. There's a lot of there's a lot of stories in which people don't come close to that. And that's just a reality. And that's not putting anybody down. It's just reality. Not everybody, not well, let's put it like this. When everyone shows up at the start line of a race, there's only one winner. Um, or there's only three medalists. Somebody's going to finish first. Somebody's going to finish last. And then there are going to be people who finish in between. That's just, that's just reality. Now, then you have your clowns. And what I call clowns, these folk who are, who are peddlers, if I were to use another term, peddlers of their gospel. They're peddling these pipe dreams that, hey, you can you could be an example of somebody earning $100,000 in six months, and all you have to do is pay at least $49, $49 for some of my courses. I got some, I got some courses for 49, 59, 69, 79, 159. But if you, but if you you apply what I'm showing you in these videos and, and in these sessions, in these mentorship sessions, you can be the next success story. Now I'm gonna share some, now I'm gonna give you some numbers behind the numbers. And you think about it. And while it may be possible, but you have to ask, what are they doing? What are they doing to reach those numbers? If it's based on, if it's doing delivery and transport, I don't think it's, I, I, I would, I would, I would highly question it the example is that one person is saying how he's got all these minty uh, people under his mentorship who have earned and, and we're talking about young folk young folk 20 21 under 25 years old earning a hundred thousand dollars in six months now y'all I earned, I grossed last year a hundred and twelve thousand and change and that was for all of 2023 I'm on pace to do that again 
In fact, I'll interject these numbers as at this juncture of this segment of the Gig Geezer. As of this documentation, Friday, June 28, 2024, it's early in the day still, I am at, for the month, over $10,100 production. I am, for at the year, at $59,800, okay? The month is not over. That means I'm at 10, 10 G's a month. This guy is saying that these people are earning it in six and seven months. But well, let's just do the six month example. That means you're averaging somewhere about 17,000 a month. 16 and change, high sixes. 16, eight, let's just say, let's just say 17,000 a month. If you break that down over the course of 30 day, an average 30 day month, that means you are averaging somewhere around 560 plus dollars a day, okay? But if you just do five days a week, that means you're averaging somewhere around 800 to $850 a day. Now, who do you know is averaging 800 to $850 a day? I have shared days, I've only shared a handful of days in which I've earned a, a grand or more. My most recent example was just two weeks ago. And that, and I mean, the dominoes had to fall the right way. Yesterday I earned, yesterday, June 27, 2024, I earned, in fact, it's in this segment of the gig geezer where I just pointed out what I earned for the day, but I'm mentioning it in this segment. Yesterday, I earned $750, $750. And it took me all fucking day and night, basically, because I started out the day doing a last mile delivery opportunity, and that took me about that that took me about five hours with all the driving time involved. And then I came home and kind of fell asleep, dozed off, woke up, and then happened to see a a broken opportunity on a load board. And so it turned out it must have had my name on it because I then left home. I was out for the next 11 hours. I earned $500 on that opportunity. On the last mile gig delivery opportunity, I earned 250. Okay, you're gonna tell me that somebody is doing that. I mean, it's, it's possible, but let's be real, okay? Let's just be fucking real about that. So, again, I suppose it's what you do, but if it's delivery and transport, this, I mean, you're selling, a, you're selling a fucking facade. That's just me talking. But, I said for me, is the ownership and operation of a Sprinter's Last Cargo Van a blessing or a curse? There are times I think it's a curse because I know that I've added, at a minimum, $2,100 more in monthly expenses. But this is something I mentioned in this segment of the Gig Geezer that, fa that was factored into my break point. Okay? But even then, even when you make those calculations, there is still the reality of having to meet those, meet those, that obligation. And let's just say, really, realistically, added costs with the ownership and operation of a Sprinter Size Cargo Van. We're not even talking about gas. We're not even talking about gas to put in the vehicle because you got you to gotta put gas in all your vehicles. But I would say a nice round number is an additional cost of $2,500 each month, okay? $600, let us round it off. My, my, my van note is actually less than $600, but I tend, to, I tend to pay $600 every month. So I'm paying a little over every month. My commercial insurance, which I've talked about and I've, and I've gone back and forth with people about it, my commercial insurance is $1,520 a month. And then just, you know, other things that may go into the ownership and operation of a Sprinter size cargo, man, 2,500 is a realistic number, man. And there are times, man, when the money's not coming in, the cash flow is not the way, you, not the way you'd like it to be. That, that shit, that shit be laughing in your face, man. And you kind of think, why the fuck did I do this? Why the fuck did I get this goddamn van, man? But then I think about if I just still going, if I still went around with a 
just doing stuff out of my F-150. I there's a very good chance I wouldn't be I wouldn't have stories of that I've had. So I, I think ultimately I made the right decision. And then, you know, in that respect, it is a blessing. But then there's those then there's been those occasions where I've had the major repairs. The the wheel bearing when I was going to Knoxville, Tennessee. The throttle body that went out on me at nighttime, having me thinking that I, I had lost my transmission. Then most recently, front end, in which I had to replace a control arm, ball joints, struts, and then another front end alignment. Then there's been tires. Tires are kind of according to maintenance, but two sets of tires for sure. That's four, that's thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. Okay. When you start when you start thinking about things, when you start thinking about money that goes out, and then when you start dealing with the fact that hey, it's it's not like the money the money has you know you, you think about how you're you're earning your money, which then affects your cash flow. How money is affected? Here's what I mean by that. You know that when you do certain gig apps, as I mentioned, you got some gig apps that you may be, you may see money deposit in your account that same day. But then you have some gig apps where it may be a couple of days, three or four days, maybe a week later. And then there's some apps in which you're paid twice a month or once a, once a month. Okay. How that money comes in affects your cash flow and how you go about doing go about doing your business and even taking care of your other personal personal obligations. And so when you're and then when you're having times in which the, your market is slow, it seems to be rigor mortis and double constipation moves faster than what you're seeing on the app on your phone. Yeah. You entertain a lot of thoughts. But if I were to sum up this segment of the Gig Geezer, and by the way, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment or in any other segment, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I will just say that it's been both. It's been a blessing and a curse. It's been a blessing because it has provided me some opportunities, some opportunities that I never would have thought I would have um, um, had. Um, the money earned is more than I've ever earned, and I've been around a long time. Um, it's very, it's very sobering. It's very humbling to think that what you do in a month is what would have taken you four months on on some W two gigs, and I'm talking about for me within the last ten years. Um, if, if for nothing else, uh, when I worked at a car lot, the, my best year at a car lot, it would have taken me a couple of months to, to, uh, make the same money. My best year as an insurance agent where in which my, where I, when I depended mostly on insurance agent money, it would have taken me a couple of months, two, three months to, um, make the same money. So. You know, I'm seeing, I, I'm earning more money than I've ever earned. Um, you know, there's, it's a nice thing to be able to say um, when you, when you are, when you're, for example, when I go and um, check in at an airport or a freight forwarding place and they ask me, what's the name of your business? I'd hand them my business card. I don't, I don't, since I, since, um, since I don't talk really loud, um, what I'll do is I'll give them my business card and they're like, oh, is it? Yeah, that's my, that's my business. Um, that's a, that's, that's, that's a, um, that can be a very satisfying moment. Um, I, I mean, because I've, I've been, I have run my own business enterprise for over the, like over the last 20 years, it's not a big deal to me, but for some people that is a very proud moment to be able to flip that business card. Okay. Yeah. And when people approach you about things, um, when people approach you about things, um, they say, "Do you have a business card?" Oh yeah, I'll be I'll be right back. Or you can reach into your wallet and give them a couple of your cards. Whether they get back with you, then, you know. But hey, you're able to at least give them something that may that that may result in 
cash cash game opportunities, which it, ha it has for me. Um, I guess another thing is the people that you meet. Um, I think of the Edies in Sumter. I think of Mr. Uh, Tremarcus, Dar um, Tremarcus Darden, whom I met in Atlanta and I've mentioned on, on a on a community page and then in the gig geezer segment um there have been people who have when i've been out doing um either um, gig food delivery delivery uh, gig food delivery or even a last mile gig delivery or i'm i'm driving to um the next opportunity i've had people gig geezer gig geezer man i've been checking out your stuff um sj um sydney and sj father and son um, yeah, I, I, I've not seen them in a while, but I think of them. Um, it, it's, it's a nice, it's nice to know that people see your content and it, and it's, it may be inspiring them to go out and do this, to go out on their own and whatever it is that they're going to do. Um, it's not always exact. It's not always exactly to get a van to do what I'm doing, but to go out and on their own and pursue their own business enterprise. So with that, um, you know, there's responsibility. I take it as like this. When people can recognize you while you're driving down the road or you're going in the parking lot, going somewhere to do something, I take it as, I, it's, it's a compliment, but it's also a responsibility to go with it. And so with the stuff that I've shared with y'all over these years, it's not, it's not the bullshit you. It's not the bullshit you. Um, I don't go around telling people, oh, you can do this and you can do that. And you, and no, if I, when, when I start talking, I'll put it like this. When I talk of numbers, I've done it. And when I talk of 10,000 a month or more, I've done it multiple times. When you talk of 2,000 a week, $2,500 a week, I've done it multiple times. Weeks in a row, consecutive weeks in a row. Um, when it comes to um, just sheer operating a business um i can talk about it and not give people bullshit stories or unproven stuff so hopefully you get where i'm going hopefully you get something out of this segment of the gig geezer if you like the content that's been provided in this segment or in any other segment hit that subscribe button give my content a thumbs up share my content among others and i definitely welcome your comments in the section below I'm in with Lane. As always, may your grind and may your hustle continue.